Did you know that Joseph had a Gentile bride? Yeah, he did. He and Moses both had Gentile brides, and both of them, interestingly, were rejected by their own, the tribes of Israel, but then they end up having a Gentile bride for a long period of time. But what happens? They both end up saving Israel. This is God's plan, you guys. And we're looking at Joseph's story right now in Genesis chapter 41. And you're going to see how he gets a Gentile bride from who? From he who sits on the throne. <laughs> this is so exciting. We're looking at how Joseph is a lot like Jesus. And it helps us to understand books like the book of Revelation. So let's get into this presentation right now. So yes, he has a Gentile bride. So then Pharaoh named Joseph Zaphnach Peneach, and he gave him Asenath. Asenath, that's her name, her Egyptian name. And she was the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, to be his wife. So she came from this Gentile uh, priest, this pagan type priest, and now she's with Joseph, with this Hebrew leader. So she was a Gentile. Isn't that interesting, you guys? She was an actual Gentile. And here, I know this is from the cartoon. I thought it was kind of funny. But here we see a picture of him with his, his bride at his right hand. Now, I do not believe in replacement theology at all. Okay, I, th I believe what the Bible says in Romans chapter 11, verse 25, where it says that when that last number of Gentiles has come in or right come to Christ, then all of Israel will be saved. That goes right along with what we're looking at in Joseph's story. That's exactly what we're looking at. This is the same thing. So he right now he has a Gentile bride, okay? Here he is with his Gentile bride, but that's going to change. He'll keep her forever. They're going to be together forever, but it doesn't mean he rejects Israel because he saves all of Israel. And they have this amazing family reunion where they weep together and love each other. And there's this amazing story of forgiveness, as you know, in Joseph's story. It's, a, it's powerful. So let's look at Psalm 45, because this is a messianic psalm. Always has been, always will be. This speaks of the Messiah. Or if you're in Israel, this speaks of Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay? Now, Psalm 45, it says, At your right hand stands the queen in gold from Ophir. The, the gold from Ophir was very prized, a very pure, excellent gold. And then in, we, look in Gen we look in Genesis 41, right? Joseph's story. Here we are. Now, before the year of famine came, that seven-year time of great trouble, or you could even say Jacob's trouble or Yaakov's trouble, right? Now, before the year of the famine came, two sons were born to Joseph, right? To him and his bride. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh. Manasseh. And what does that mean? What does that name mean to us? For he said, God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. So the son that was born through him and his Gentile bride, the church, right? The picture of the church. He has a son named Manasseh, which means to help me forget all of my father's household, all my trouble in my father's household. Now watch this. Psalm 45 again, about the Messiah, the, the Messiah on his throne with the bride coming to him. It says, forget your people and your father's house. Now that's to the bride, but what's interesting is we're seeing the same language there. Isn't that cool? How the Bible explains the Bible. The Bible is the best commentary for the Bible. Now let's check this out. Genesis 41, and he named the second, the second son Ephraim. Ephraim, right? What does that mean? Well, let's look. For he said, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Ephraim means fruitful. It also means some other things. We're going to look at that right now. Watch this. This gets really, this is really exciting, you guys. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. It says, I will build you. This is God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah to who? Israel. Now watch this. I will build you again. And you will be rebuilt, virgin of Israel. So he calls them the virgin of Israel. Now keep that thought in your mind. Watch this. Psalm 45, again, that messianic psalm about the king on the throne with his bride. The virgins, her companions, who compa whose companions? The bride that we just looked at. 
the bride of this Messiah. The virgins, her companions who follow her will be brought to you. Now watch this. Jeremiah 31 continues, For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So he's relating Ephraim to the virgin, right? And then in Revelation chapter 14, we see no one could learn that song except the 144,000, right? The 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel that God seals and saves, who had been redeemed from the earth. And then Revelation also continues, and it says, who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. Whoa. So we're seeing the word virgin with Ephraim in Jeremiah 31. And now we're seeing the the connection in Revelation chapter 14, speaking of the Jewish people, because 144,000 are none other than the Jewish people. And some people don't like that. The Jehovah's Witnesses think they're the 144,000 until they had more than 144,000. They had to change their doctrine. And then some of the other Christian uh, denominations think that as well. They're wrong. If you are from, if you're the 144,000 and you're a Gentile, tell me which tribe do you belong to? You can't tell me that. So it's it, speaking specifically, God made sure he spelled it out. It's the tribes of Israel. That's who he's talking about being saved in Revelation chapter 14. And it's very powerful stuff, guys. All right, let's go back into it. So Revelation 14, here we are continuing. It is these who follow the lamb wherever he goes. The lamb being Jesus, right? They follow him. These have been redeemed from mankind as, and here's first fruits again. Remember, Ephraim means fruitful. They have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the lamb. Wow, (laughs) so good. And then back to Psalm 45, that messianic psalm. The virgins, her companions who follow her will be brought to you. Brought to who? To the king, to he who sits on the throne. This speaks of like the end of what we see in the end of Revelation. This is very powerful stuff, guys. And so again, the Bible explains the Bible. So back to Genesis 41. Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea. So that during that seven-year time of great harvest, which comes before that seven-year time of great famine or of great trouble, we see Joseph storing up much grain, which to me speaks of Romans chapter 11, verse 25, when that last number of Gentiles comes to Christ, then all of Israel will be saved. <laughs> wow. So here's a picture of some grain that would be what the stuff that Joseph collected, these heads of grain, right, which make bread. And then we see that this is an actual site in Saqqara, Egypt, where they have these massive grain silos. This is just one of many in that site. And they go down 65 feet, and they found petrified grain at the bottom of these. So what these were was a a place to store, it was like having grain towers. It was a place to store massive amounts of grain in case there was a famine. And they had a system where they would walk down and there was a hatch and the grain would come out and it would fill these sacks and the men would walk one way in, one way out. Many of the archaeologists archaeologists believe that, which makes sense to me. And that's how the Bible described it. They were getting sacks of grain from Joseph, right? His brothers. We'll look at that in a further episode. So... Genesis 41 continues until he stopped measuring, right? He was gathering all this grain until he stopped measuring for it was beyond measure. Now watch this. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 7. After this, John says, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number. Wow. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like Joseph's story. From every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes. Wow. (laughs) These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. These are the tribulation saints, as some call them. Those who were left behind after the rapture. And they were still remaining here on earth and had to go through the wrath of God poured out on the earth. But God, in his great mercy, gives them a second chance. And when that last number of this great multitude was collected and sealed by God, guess what? Then all of Israel gets saved. See the chronological events here that we see in 
the story of Joseph. It's so powerful, you guys. Amazing that God put this together for us so we can use the Bible to understand the Bible. We use Joseph's story to understand the book of Revelation, just like we do with Daniel and just like we do with Moses' story. So, hey, don't forget, hit this playlist right here. You're going to see how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You can catch up on all these Joseph episodes. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But again, this playlist right here, Go ahead and uh, click on that. It's all free content. You can watch all the previous episodes, my friend.